All right, so in this video, I'm gonna tell you exactly the things that you need to know to ace a Go programming or Golang interview. But before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that I do have a full course on microservices using the Go programming language that includes career coaching, where we can dig deeper into your specific situation and where you're at in your journey and try to determine the best things for you to work on in order to land that first job or even second job. So you can access that course in the description below but without further ado let's get started with the things that you should know before going into an interview for a position using the go programming language so the first thing that you should understand is this like go is a relatively new language so there's not going to be a lot of job postings using the go programming language with like super old legacy code built on top of some old architecture or some monolithic architecture. Since Go is a relatively new language, for the most part, companies that do adopt this language or companies that are using this language in their tech stack are usually relatively new companies as well, or they're built on relatively modern architectures. And that means that most positions like if you wanna be able to cast a wider net, you'll be doing yourself a huge favor if you familiarize yourself with microservice architectures because that is the standard contemporarily for the most part. Now, what does that have to do with the Go programming language specifically? Well, there's certain technologies that we use in the world of microservices when building out microservices using the Go programming language. For example, one thing that I think is very beneficial for you to learn is gRPC. And gRPC is essentially a remote procedure call framework and simply put it's used for like intercommunication between microservices within a microservice architecture and again this is something that we go over in depth in my course which again is linked below now with that in mind the logical next step would be to actually learn about microservice architectures like if you're looking for a job using the go programming language there's a really high chance that you'll be looking for a job that the architecture of the application that you'd be working on potentially is a microservice architecture. So familiarizing yourself with microservices and even building out your own projects, like adding microservice architecture project to your portfolio would benefit you hugely in my opinion. Now getting into the more language specific things, you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with concurrency in Go. Now concurrency is a very big part of the Go programming language as a whole. So understanding how concurrency works in Go and understanding some of the common concurrency patterns that we use in the Go programming language when building out applications and such is going to put you well ahead of most of the competition. A lot of people just learn the language and don't necessarily understand the core of the language, which is concurrency in my opinion. Like this, this language was essentially built on communicating sequential processes and concurrency is like pretty much one of the largest benefits of the Go programming language aside from its simplicity. And I actually have an entire free playlist on concurrency in Go that is currently three videos long at, at the time that I'm making this video, but I'll be adding more videos to that playlist as well. But I go pretty in depth on some of the most common concurrency patterns and I try to teach concurrency in a very accessible way in that video or those videos. It's three videos. So go ahead and check those out as well. Just find the concurrency playlist on my channel. Now, lastly, we're gonna get into one more language specific thing. And it's not really specific, in general, it's not really specific to only the Go programming language, but from the perspective of Go, you need to learn this particular thing. So the next thing is pointers. So you need to understand how pointers work in Go. You need to understand the syntax and how to use pointers and how to make use of pointers using the Go programming language. Now, again, this is something that's gonna put you way ahead of the competition in terms of being able to read and understand Go code, like Golang code, because pointers are used everywhere. So you, you'd you wanna understand how pointers work in Go and how to make use of them, syntax, etc. And it just so happens that I have a free video on my channel about pointers in Go as well, where I explain everything that you need to know about pointers in Go, and it's actually a super short video so you can get through it relatively quickly and it should put you in a position to kind of 
go ahead and build some things out making use of pointers and then really becoming familiar with pointers in the Go programming language. Now, I didn't wanna make this video too long. I, I essentially only went over the essentials. Like these are the main things that you should understand when going into an interview that's for a position that uses the Go programming language. Everything else is gonna be just general knowledge like algorithms and data structures and stuff like that, which applies to really any language. Now, again, I have an entire course that includes career coaching on microservice architectures in Go, which is going to include pretty much everything that you would do in a real world scenario. Like we're, we build out a project and that project is a real world project. So you'd have direct experience with working with a microservice architecture using the Go programming language, which would in turn give you most of the knowledge that you need for an entry level position as a Golang developer engineer in the first place. So I really suggest that you invest in your ability to improve your odds of getting a job in the future using the Go programming language. And of course, like I mentioned before, the career coaching will include help for your specific situation and how you can put yourself in a better position to be able to land that job. So I hope this video was helpful and I hope that you were able to get some information out of this. If you haven't looked at the other videos on my channel, I have lots of content on the Go programming language where I teach many different subjects and many different patterns using the Go programming language. So yeah, just check that out if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one.